Fire Brigade. Yeah, hello, hi, in the fire, flat 16 Greenfield Tower. So are you fire where? Uh, flat 16 Greenfield Tower. It was one of the UK's worst modern disasters, as mothers, fathers, children and family members all perished in unimaginable circumstances. Survivors were left homeless, having lost almost all their belongings. Grief soon turned to anger. <laughs> Theresa May immediately ordered a public inquiry as grieving relatives like Hamdan al-Alami demanded answers. Here are my family here. Why? Why? The day night I no sleep. Always cry. I have four family die. Soon after the fire, it quickly emerged that the flammable cladding on the block was central to the rapid spread of the fire. And it turned out that this cladding and other fire safety defects were found in tens of thousands of buildings across the country. Many became completely worthless and leaseholders had to foot the bill to make them safe. Hayley Tillotson is one of them. Uh, I actually went bankrupt at the end of 2020 because me and my neighbours in my flat in Leeds were paying for hundreds of pounds in waking watch, in new fire alarms and insurance and building insurance and just loads of costs that we should never have had to pay because it just isn't our fault. After mounting pressure, Housing Secretary Michael Gove announced in January that building developers would be the ones to remove dangerous cladding. I'm clear about who should pay the price for remedying failures. It should be the industries who profited as they caused the problem and those who continue to profit as they make it worse. To those who missold dangerous products like cladding or insulation, to those who cut corners to save cash as they developed or refurbished people's homes, and to those who sought to profiteer from the consequences of the Grenfell tragedy, we are coming for you. But since then, many argue that little has changed and that progress has been too slow. Two weeks ago, the government banned the specific type of cladding which allowed the blaze to spread so rapidly, half a decade since the fire took place. But while debate over housing regulations continue, and the much-delayed public inquiry into Grenfell rumbles on, a community continues to grieve. During the Jubilee weekend, a poignant street party was held close to the tower, with 72 empty chairs to commemorate those who died. Emma O'Connor is one of the survivors of the fire. It should really be speaking volumes to the government that we care and your actions speak louder than words and um, we, don't, we don't see any government help. We just, um, we, we're not even allowed the tower back under our control. Grenfell Tower still looms over London's landscape like a gravestone a constant reminder of all those who lost their lives. Alice Porter, GB News.